My name is Amir Mohammadi. I'm a mathematician and I work in dynamical systems. Yeah, so dynamical system, I think, is one of those areas in mathematics that it has an applied side and a pure side. And it's just by its nature. The goal in dynamics is to understand long-term behavior of particles, systems. Using mathematical models, you can try to explain a lot of things in the nature in the past two years to try and model how COVID transmits using dynamical systems because you have a person and then how many people this person meets and how COVID transmits from this person to nearby people. This, you can think of it as some type of a random walk. My work though is uh, on the pure side, the type of problems I look at involve highly non-commutative objects acting on some spaces, which are very abstract spaces. But maybe, maybe I can try to give uh, an example that is possible to relate to. Consider you have a room and the walls are mirrors and the room has an L shape. Maybe it's a polygon with many edges. You have a light bulb that you want to light at a point in the room and you wonder whether it's possible to put this light bulb somewhere in the room that some spots remain dark. Is it the case that no matter which place you put your light bulb, the whole room will be illuminated? And okay, this is a simple question that you can ask, but the answer to this question is actually quite complicated. It really depends on the shape of the room. What goes into the proof is uh, quite deep mathematics. The way you try to understand this is by looking at the collection of rooms and studying a, some sort of a dynamical system on this collection. This collection of rooms will be something called the modular space. And then you have very complicated dynamics that you understand, you try to understand and the understanding of that dynamical system tells you something about this very, very concrete problem. I like to look at collection of objects that they, maybe there's a, there's some hidden symmetries and studying these symmetries will tell me something about explicit problems. These uh, spiral graphs that they don't fill in. So somehow you start from a point, you go for some time and you return to the initial point with the initial angle. If you just repeat, you're just tracing the path that you already traveled. It turns out that this happens only for a small number of directions. You can put this light bulb in a place and just slightly tilt your angle, then you make sure that you cover the whole thing. So these are trajectories that are not periodic. They will go everywhere in the space. Really the question is, okay, periodic trajectories somehow we kind of understand. They start from a point, they return to some point, and uh, these, are, these are things that is, are, let's say, quote unquote, easy to understand. Now, what if a trajectory is not periodic? If it's not periodic, is it biased towards parts of room, or it's actually going to go everywhere? And the answer is that it's gonna go everywhere. I will be speaking at the International Congress of Mathematicians. My talk will be presenting new results in this direction of the finitary analysis uh, dynamical systems. The mathematics, it's governed by patterns. You want to understand symmetries and lack of symmetries. If there is a lot of symmetry, there has to be an underlying reason behind it. And that's what you're trying to extract. So you are looking at these different examples, trying to see whether a pattern emerges. Then when this pattern emerges, you try to make that precise in a sense, or as, as precise as you can, and then look for a reason behind this. I think Albert Einstein says that pure mathematics is the poetry of logical thinking. And I think it explains my work also. It's, it's just, uh, just the joy that you understand something new that nobody before did. It's, I think it's enough for me.